Dude, what are you doing? I'm recording a recording of the recording. So meta. <laughs> Today, meta contingencies on the Daily VA. <laughs> <laughs> Bass hit and the video goes like Behavior man, 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 man. Wait, I'm gonna say behavior man now. Yeah. Behavior man. So, uh, welcome. We are literally hanging out in this awesome kitchen. So the goal is today is to talk about behavior analysis in your everyday life. Cooking. <laughs> Do you use? Oh, let's start there. <laughs> yeah. Let's start there. Do you use it while cooking? When we're in the kitchen. Do I use behavior analysis while I'm cooking? Interesting question. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't systematically apply to any of my behavior analytic knowledge towards my cooking, but just there's behavior in everything we do, so I guess one could use it, and yeah. probably do. That, if you are using it in cooking, please comment below. Yes, we actually, need, we need to talk. Actually, to I have done pre portioned um, meals once upon a time. So, meal, like fitness meal related, prep. we're gonna have another episode based on that. But meal prep, that, so that would be. So, meal prep, I saw this funny meme that's like, meal prep. Uh, is what it's called the fitness world, but everywhere else it's just called packing your lunch. Yes, that's basically <laughs> the truth. You're packing your lunch for a few days ahead of time. So it's an antecedent strategy that would, I guess, minimize the amount of food you eat per meal. Okay, yeah. So uh, how do you do it? What do you do if no one's ever done it? Uh, you literally I, you so prepare a bunch of food I used and you to, put it in small containers. Yeah, okay. So like, I used to cook. I, I got really into this when it came down to fitness. So I'd, I would cook up uh, usually something carb-related, protein-related. Um, and then I'd have something that was a little bit more healthy to snack on as well, um, salad or whatever. And I just cook a bunch of it for like four or five yeah. days, and then I throw it all up in containers. And I think that's what meal prepping is. Is that yes. what it was for you? I mean, you're preparing your meals. <laughs> so <laughs> meal prep, yeah. I guess. I mean, in the strictest sense, anytime you make a meal, you're prepping. But I, I guess it's just a antecedent intervention yeah. to, I guess, reduce the amount you eat per meal. So yeah, meal prep. Yeah, it's behavior analytic. Look at that. See. Bam. ABA. ABA. Yeah, ABA all the way every day. <laughs> That's bad. We didn't, we didn't make up a hashtag or anything <laughs> for that. Um, okay, cool. Dig. That's one way. Next strategy. Um, well, can we, I want to segue, before we dive into these strategies, uh, you yeah. know we already did. The thing that I want everyone to know is behavior analysis, or the science of human behavior, applies to literally every behavior an organism does. And as humans, any behavior human does. Um, so we take our behavior analytic practice with our children and with autism, behavior problems, developmental disabilities, and then we go home. But we're behavior analysts, and as a behavior analyst, and what we know philosophically uh, yeah. of our understanding of what behavior analysis is as a science, we need to practice what we preach outside of our literal work practice. So I think the most, the, the best behavior analysts, the most sophisticated behavior analysts, are those who try to apply the what they do every day yeah. across their day in yeah. all aspects of their lives to improve their own life and to improve the lives of those around them. And I think that would make us the most well-rounded practitioner. And also, even if you're not yet a behavior analyst, if you're studying behavior analysis, yep. Yep. this is always a great exercise. This is what I do with a lot of my behavior techs, is when, they, when they're trying to learn more, I'll say, write yourself a behavior plan, self-management something. Or when you're learning something in school, don't only think, how can I use this at work? Think, how can I use this at home? Yeah. And that gives you a better understanding of how behavior works in general. Yep. Yeah. And so yeah, I see that a lot on like test prep strategies and things like that. And I was like, I was taught to just take it and try to apply it in your own life as many ways as you can. That could be like, oh, what was the SD for this behavior? Or yeah. what was the MO that was controlling, you know, whatever it is. Um, all the way down to like, I want to create myself an entire self-management plan. And like, this is the details of it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think that's, uh, I see why, uh, I see why it feels better to go to a text and reread a text and such, but there's that skill of reading and then applying it. Yes. And so I found that like test prep or learning it or whatever it is, like you can throw as much time as you want there, but you need to start applying it in your own life if you want to really get a super good understanding. I mean, if you're, you're going to become most fluent in your practice, yeah. right? the more you do it, yeah. the more fluent you will become. So even if you're just thinking in terms of fluency and becoming better at applying behavior analysis, 
then the more you practice, the better you'll become. Yeah. Right? Yep. And your life will just be markedly better. I mean, because like the entire principle of applied and behavior analysis is to improve lives, right? Yep. And Seems by so applying right. science. So Seems if so you're right. practicing it on yourselves, your life should be better. Yeah, yeah. So that's Hopefully. the main takeaway here. <laughs> After watching this video, your life is going to dramatically improve, okay? I don't I don't think it really will, but if it does, it'd be pretty cool, right? It's going to. <laughs> save lives. That's what we're doing, saving the world uh, one, <laughs> one day we be a video at a time. Or at least you like picked up a dope shirt. Yeah, dope shirt. Hashtag behavior man. That's real behavior man. So, uh, okay, so ways that I've used it. I used it to start just counting everything I possibly could in life. Um, counting? Yeah, I counting okay. as much as I could, but then like database decision making after that. And yeah. So I'd start to like manipulate and see like variable wise what was controlling my behavior to some extent. So some crazy things that I have done. I wore a sleep uh, monitor for over two years to analyze my sleep data. On your head? Yeah, every night before I went to bed, I had this nice little <laughs> that I'd put on. Do you have a picture of up. this? I do not, <laughs> but I have the data um, and it's all there. Picture it didn't happen, folks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it did not happen. <laughs> Oh, fine. It was called a Zio, and like, okay. which, yeah, every five seconds it sampled what was going on. And so uh, I have a chart that shows. I do have the chart still. So I have a chart that shows. Um, so it was taking me. So this was during grad school. It was about 20 minutes to fall asleep, and I was like, I need every second I can to like study, rest, <laughs> or like whatever. You know, you can yeah. be like hyper efficient. And so. Uh, what I was trying to do is see if I could fall asleep faster. That was my first thing I wanted to okay. do. And I don't know. Really get those 20 minutes. Of... I never got to replicate. Yeah, yeah, I never got to like replicate with others. Um, but what I did with myself is I got it down to. I realized after it was a couple months of like charting and trying to figure out what was going on. Like I was super tense. Like and I wasn't like relaxing myself. Yeah. And so I like what I led to is an intervention of like get in bed, lay down, and just like tax like body parts. Of, like, mm -hmm what's like tense, what's relaxed and not. Yeah. And then that seemed to do like wonders on my sleeping. Yeah. Um, and then I think also partially like just sleep deprivation of grad school. <laughs> like yeah. it hit me there. That's, but that's like I could, I could like, there was a marked difference when I started doing that. So yeah. it was one weird way that that's I played it. That's interesting. I've never even thought about um, the, the sleep idea when we were talking about. Yeah. Talking about this, but personally I used to have trouble sometimes and it was just, I would think a lot about things. Like, so I would just have these thoughts in my head over and yeah. over again. So what I ended up doing was just kind of read and read until I fall asleep. And it's kind of like a replacement behavior. I don't know, I didn't really take data on it, but yeah, yeah. just thinking of sleeping, that's something that helped me sleep. Yeah. It would have been interesting if I actually did have data showing that I fall asleep faster if I'm yeah. just reading until I fall asleep. Yeah, yeah. Then you also get more reading in. Yeah, yeah, the reading one, I used <laughs> to just read, uh, I'd count every page that I read as yeah. well. And then I'd look at, I'd just throw it on a graph, a simple thing. Uh, people talk about a lot of behavior analysis, just like throw the thing on a graph and look at it and that can actually change the behavior itself. Yeah. And so it consistently grew for like a year and a half, just that strategy of charting my progress. Now that's like overall, I went up and down obviously. Um, but that's I was just cool. like trying to read pages. Yeah. And so it was just like every day I'd take like account nine pages, 10 pages, 100 pages, whatever it was. And then I'd aggregate that per week and then I'd look at where that growth was. Yeah, that's really awesome. I think I'm gonna start charting. I mean, it's not like it's a, a problem in my life anymore though, so I'm not sure if it'd be really uh, a smart behavior to start measuring. Yeah. It'd really worth the time because I'm not having trouble falling asleep nowadays, but it would have been interesting to, to see what that intervention, I guess, reading the book had yeah. on the behavior. Also, one other thing I do is I never do anything in my bed besides try to sleep. So it's reading the book until I go to sleep and that's the only behavior I engage in my bed. Yeah. Didn't Skinner and Cuff out. Something along those lines? Yeah, I don't know exactly on that. I know that he was hyper focused on uh, arranging his environment to fit yeah. things perfectly. So I know there's certain intricacies with his desk, like he could sit down and turn the blinds on or turn the change the blinds yeah. from like his desk without having to get up. And it's one of those things that I do that stuff as well. Like I'll like get the smart plug, put the smart plug in, and I'll spend 20 minutes messing with the smart plug. <laughs> smart plug. But it's once it's smart. In, well, yeah. <laughs> but once it's in there, like I walk into the studio and lights turn on, and when I leave, the lights turn off. Like I never have to turn the lights on or off again. You have power. Yes. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Right. <laughs> awesome. So that 20 minutes invested, it's really made your life more efficient. Maybe I don't. I don't. I don't know <laughs> how, how many. How, how difficult is it to turn on and off the light? Well, so in the studio, I have like I have lights set up in like three or four spots. And yeah. So it probably saves me thirty seconds every in and out. So each day, which I do. I did. This is kind of a cool thing. Um, I guess ways I use it is I realize the measurement practices that we have in behavior analysis are very 
very useful. Like yeah. we we're like hyper focused on that. And so I try to blend it with technology. So um, I have a Geo, so there's a, an app called If This Then That. Have you heard of it? I have heard of it. Yeah. So it, it uh, you can basically create your own recipes and do all sorts of different cool things with it. Um, like uh, kind of your, your, your imagination's limit paired with your, your budget <laughs> on like what gadgets you want. Yeah. Um, so what I do is when I walk into the studio, the it also takes a timestamp when I come to that radius and it knows how long I'm there. Um, really so cool. theoretically what you do at the end of the year, after putting that smart plug in, is like you take that 30 seconds on average that I'm saving, look at that data that's automatically logged, you just do a quick uh, sum of it, and I can tell you like I probably saved this much time with the lights. <laughs> so I'll, re <laughs> I'll report back. I, I, I need to highlight just how extremely nerdy the heat analysts are. He's literally <laughs> trying to see how much time in his life he will save by not having to turn on and off his life. So, on his lights. So th uh -huh. saving 30 seconds a day, how much of his life would he actually gain from that? Yeah, yeah. Which is awesome. I mean, taking data on anything is probably the coolest thing ever. Like you meet someone at a party and they tell you to take data on their light turning off and on behavior, I'm sure you'd be extremely attracted to that person, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, wouldn't we all? Or maybe it's just us, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. But that's just <laughs> something really cool about behavior analysts, I guess. It's just, this is what we enjoy talking about. Yeah. But, so that that's a cool one, so sleeping behavior. I mean, I mean what Yeah, and I'm by no means like keeping up with the research or anything, but um, that was one area. Yeah. We hit uh Well, I want to, one of the areas I want to talk about are kind of related to sleep, but it's not falling to sleep, it's waking up. Okay. I had this Ooh. ridiculous issue where I would snooze about 74 times. Like, I, I don't even know. On like, like an iPhone? No, nine minutes, honestly, it would, I would times say, nine. yeah, it would, uh, it 74 would, times nine? <laughs> I don't know, it was an insane amount. I would just keep snoozing. Like, so I would know I would have to set my alarm two hours before I wanted to wake up because it was just gonna snooze up until it was time to wake up. And I would have like four different levels of an alarm. So like a secondary alarm would have to go off to signify like you need to, almost stop snoozing and then there's a final alarm like if you don't get up you're gonna lose your job so that's when i would finally get up but i don't know what it was it, 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 it didn't always start this way it was We've almost all like been there right snoozing yes yeah, snoozing yeah. was just reinforced over time so at first like snoozing is just like this little convenient thing i want a couple extra minutes snooze but then it literally just barreled out of control and it was just overly reinforced and i developed this extremely bad habit of snoozing 74 times a day and i am just making up that number but what I did do to address this, because I don't know if it was 74 times, but then I did start collecting actual data. It'd be like five, I think, it's, I, did, I, think I did the math, I think it would be 568 minutes of sneezing if you did that. And how many hours? I don't know, that's uh, almost 10 hours. <laughs> almost 10 so, hours. Just I snoozed 10 hours. <laughs> yeah, so that but was the man, and I snoozed 10 hours a day. <laughs> and not to even imagine how poor sleep that must be. Like, oh, that's yeah, such yeah. broken sleep. No, so, so if you are gonna, you rather just, you might as well just not snooze at all those two hours and get efficient, good sleep instead of having broken sleep for those last two hours and not even get the benefit of sleep. Yeah. But I digress. How did I solve this issue? So there is this app that I found, because I'm like, as a behavior analyst, I'm like, I need to solve this issue. Yeah. So it's called Alarm Clock Extreme with an X. Extreme. Extreme. So what this app essentially allowed me to do was I set up, uh, Every time I snooze, it makes me do math problems, right? Ooh. So it makes me do math problems. And the more I snooze, the more math problems I would have to do for it to turn off. Okay, yeah, okay. So the alarm goes and yeah, goes yeah. until you okay. finish all your math problems. But if I snooze it, the next time, like say the first time, I need to do four math problems. I snooze it, the next time it's gonna make me do five math problems and then six. So if I keep snoozing, it's just gonna be like, just a crazy amount of alarm and math to get through to wake yeah, up, so. Yeah. Um, uh, so essentially this punished my behavior at an alarming rate and now I still use this and I might snooze once or twice sometimes three it depends the though the one issue that I did find is that I become became exceedingly good at math in the morning oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. like adding and subtracting these numbers like and I don't even know how I found the answer but I'm, I'm getting really good at math so that made it it lowered the response effort having to do the math problems so that was a problem but you can increase the difficulty yeah the problem is, is like from medium to hard is like a huge gap like to the point where I would need a calculator yeah <laughs> so that's just way too much but the idea is that I was able to change my actual alarm clock to punish my behavior, so I stop snoozing, right? Yeah. Because it's adding more math problems yeah, each time. Yeah, yeah. It's making more aversive yeah. tasks. And then also just having to think through these math problems. 
kind of it's a behavior that might it's a lot of work. Up. Yeah, it might wake you up in and of itself instead of just hitting snooze without even realizing yeah. you fall back to sleep. Yeah, you can no longer do that. So there's a few things that could be functioning there, right? Yeah, yeah right? that's a perfect thing to chat about in the comments. Yeah, well, well, that'll be what awesome. Do you, what do you think it is? What effect? What's keeping him? What's keeping him from snoozing 74 times a day? <laughs> Ten hours a day. What are the mechanisms? <laughs> that's 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 an interesting discussion, but it works. So now I can say yeah, no. So. Uh, I've learned that if I kept it consistent on my sleep, yeah. uh, so I try to wake up and go to bed at the same time roughly, like that was a big factor. Yeah. If I alter that, then I'm all messed up. Can you um, talk about when you do sleep? Because I feel like yeah. you don't sleep. <laughs> no, I do. <laughs> Anytime I ever try to reach you, it's like 5 in the morning, you're like emailing right back. Like, yeah. yeah. What's going on? What's up, man? <laughs> I've been waiting for this email. <laughs> I'm awake. It's been a while. <laughs> so the, he's lying about all this. He doesn't actually sleep? Five hours. That's all you need. He's got five hours. Arnold Schwarzenegger was like, I was listening to a motivational thing one day and he's like, and you sleep six hours. And I was just like, okay. And he was like, and he's like, he, he answers everybody yeah. in that, but he's like, some of the effect of, I'll have to like overlay it. He's like, if you think, uh, if you think you need more, you don't, just sleep faster. And I was like, oh, that's all you do? You yeah. just sleep faster? Get through it. Get, yeah. get what you need to do then. No, uh, it used to be a lot easier, I will say, and then I started focusing on my diet the last couple of years, and I rewatched my water intake. That was one thing I realized, like, a lot of water throughout the day was very key. I'm a super avid fan of caffeine, um, but I just love the taste of coffee, so, like, that's always going. And then I watch, uh, that's a whole different topic of, like, acute versus chronic dosages, and, like, how you make sure you're not, like, becoming super addicted to caffeine, Yeah. and, like, how to kick that off. That'd um, be an interesting discussion to have with, like, some... Like physician, like yeah, nutritionist, yeah. or dietitian. Yeah. Or yeah. Um, and also, his recommendation for five hours sleep that's a personal recommendation. That's not a medical yeah. no, recommendation. That's what, that's what I do. That's not a medical recommendation. Yeah. Um, yeah so, it's uh, it's consistency for me, but I do have the snooze problem. That's what I was getting at. It's like I can control a lot of it. Like I feel like I'm, I can influence a lot of it, but um, that damn snooze button gets me too. Yeah. Um, I haven't implemented the math back strategy. It works. And the other strategy, I mean, there was this meme once where there's literally a mousetrap on top of the snooze button. So, we just snap yeah, your hand. Yeah. yeah. So, completely. Yeah. <laughs> probably would punish that pretty quickly. Yeah. I think they should just remove snooze buttons altogether. I mean, like, what is. What would happen with the world? Yeah. I mean, We'd just be a lot more productive. Yeah. That, that was just a horrible, horrible idea. Whoever invented that. Yeah. <laughs> it's too reinforcing. All right, make sure that you uh, share, tell us how you use it in your own life. Give Behavior Man a little bit of love, and I will see you tomorrow. That's your daily BA. All right, super serious time. <laughs>